Hey everybody, Bam Collectibles here, back for another statue unboxing review for you. Today we have two special statues from the MH Studio line of the Anbu series. The studio plans on releasing four different characters in their Anbu outfit, and here is the first Yamato. On the bottom we have an authenticity sticker we can see right there, we have the addition size, the awesome looking artwork of him, and then the MH logo up in that top left, including some buffer pads on the bottom so it doesn't slip as easy. The fact piece later will be installed where that flat surface area is, and then all around here we'll see like a, we have wood and some rubble on the bottom. It's really difficult to understand, I guess, what scene this is specifically from. I like to think of it as probably the underground area within the Black Ops. Maybe it could be a training area of some sort. If this is taken from a specific moment or scene in the show, please let me know in the comments, but I believe it's just themed after the Black Ops area. The rope that you see wrapped around the pole is actually real rope, and then we have a notch on top, which obviously is where Yamato is going to be standing. Through the many years of me collecting, my styles and preferences have changed, but I have to say more recently, I'm really digging these 1 7 scale lines without a round base on the bottom. It's just got this small diorama and then focusing a lot on the character. Impacted inside of this piece of rubble is a magnet which will allow it to attach to that base And again, I'm not really sure what this rubble is taken from specifically, but it does look cool Speaking of cool on the bottom of each statue You will see this stony looking version of the characters or the individual character that's being showcased on the statue their Anbu black ops mask being that each character did only come with one head sculpt without the mask being on them It's a nice touch to be able to represent that on the base in comes Yamato himself, and what a cool pose, right? So he's perched up on top, but he's also crouched at the same time. It's really cool getting to see his outfit and character up close and personal like this, because we didn't get to see much of that in the show at all. In fact, I believe we only really saw a lot of that in the Kakashi filler arc that they did, which I don't even consider filler because it was so enjoyable. The other thing that's awesome is they don't really make any statues of his character. I, you know, I believe I've seen one other one other than this one, and it was not good at all. So this is incredible to be able to have a you know, really good character representation of him in the collection. I would have imagined different parts being sculpted separately, but MH Studio does a really good job of sculpting the character all together. At least I thought they would sculpt the sword separately, but that is actually glued on there. The head sculpt on this is immaculate. You know, MH Studio really has come a long way. I've seen some really terrible pieces by them early on, but nowadays it's, it's pretty much nothing but perfection that they pump out. I said it before, I'll say it again. I'm really digging the pose that they chose for him on the base. As an addition size plaque, they yet again chose the Ambu Black Ops mask that reflects the one of their own. We have the MH Studio logo on the back, and then the actual addition size number is there on the bottom left. On the bottom right is some kanji. Please let me know in the comments what that actually is. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure where to look it up at, but somebody out there knows. Please let me know. I do appreciate it. As most studios do, I appreciate that acrylic kickstand so we can showcase this right next to the statue. All right, so backing up, here is how he looks. Incredible, I love it. And I will mention, you know, actually just a few videos ago, we did pull this Naruto CCG card of him, which is awesome. It would've been cool if we pulled it on this video, but hey, you can't line those up right. I don't rig these things. I open up packs. I do real reaction as best as I can. And I, we're gonna be busting open two packs today on the channel because per character, we open up per pack. I have to say the Naruto card packs are getting pretty expensive these days, so I have a limited quantity of those, but I will continue to work through them and open them up on the channel as long as you're enjoying them. Please let me know in the comments just to reconfirm that you are enjoying as we do get to open these on the channel. And also as a side note, I've said it on other parts of the channel, if you do have a collection of Naruto cards that you're looking to trade with, there are some instances where I will trade a statue for those if there is enough value that's brought to the table. And here we have Priestess Bell, Changed prophecy and ending and ending one one. Oh my gosh, I love these cards that have the purple trim around it. Naruto and Shion, that priestess, I think of the land of the land of the demon or something like that. But anyway, in the future, actually very near future, I'm gonna be making and sharing a video with everyone where I'm gonna be showcasing what super rare Naruto cards that I'm gonna be sending off to be graded by Beckett. Super excited about it because I can't wait to have them all lined up with their appropriate statue. I have a bunch of plans to have them next to... So oh, sweet! Look! <laughs> Naruto and Yamato in the back. Cool. It's not a super rare, but this is awesome. At least we get to pull Yamato in his actual showcase. But hey, look forward to sharing that video with you in the near future. It's going to be really exciting. Lots of awesome cards in there to share. 
Up next is Kakashi, and I love him in this outfit. It really brings me back to the Gaiden episodes after around the 500th episode of Naruto, where we get to dive deep into you know his time spent in the Anbu Black Ops and really Kakashi just coping with life after having the blood on his hands. But speaking of that scene, I actually have an Obito statue that not many have seen. It's probably one of the darkest moments in Naruto uh, of him. There's a certain part of it that's being repainted, so I'll have that soon ready and to showcase soon. But I can't wait to share probably the darkest version of a Naruto statue that I've ever showcased. This video gets to 2,000 likes within the first day. I may showcase a small teaser of that. On the top here, we'll see a steel rod. That's how Kakashi will be connecting. But again, the scene itself is not really taken from anything that I'm familiar with, but it is an awesome looking scene. Just like Yamato, there is another piece of effect that they sculpted separately. It's just a, looks like a bended steel beam, but for what it is, they did paint it really well. We can see a lot of different rust and natural steel. That little tip with the steel rod is how it does connect to the base. Spinning this around just like Yamato, we did have the Anbu mask. This one looks a little bit larger than his for some reason, but it doesn't matter. They're kind of artistic interpretations of the actual mask in like a stony format. We can see a little bit of moss growing on here as if it was actually some kind of monument. Really cool and unique idea there. I know from the first time I saw the contest for these statues, I was like, yep, sign me up. I'm already losing money on all four as soon as they come up for pre-order. In a very different looking stance, here is Kakashi. Again, it's really amazing to be able to see Kakashi in this outfit because we don't get to see many statues with him sculpted like this. Interesting paint job on the bottom. It almost looks like they have cleats or they're wearing something with a uh, metal on the bottom. If you notice, also he had a metal rod sticking out of his foot. Unfortunately, mine didn't sit right on the base. I'll go over that later and show you a zoom shot of that. But we have that notch in the back to where he connects to the actual part of the base. And there's the sheath for his sword. I'm not gonna lie too, in my 20s, I was really tempted to get an actual tattoo of the Anbu tattoo that we see multiple different members wearing. I bet you someone out there watching does have one, fess up, but let's take a look at his head sculpt here, perfection, right? Again, it looks extremely well. It looks like Kakashi, but I'd say a, a little bit younger than what we're used to seeing him in the show, especially when he's the leader of Team 7. My memory may be failing me, but I believe Kakashi used more of a short sword and this is kind of a longer katana. Maybe he did switch to that in the Gaiden episodes, but I'm probably thinking of him when he's at more of his younger, you know, version. Whatever the case, the katana is really nicely done. It is made of real steel and that helps it to where over time it doesn't bend or warp depending upon the weather or the position of it. So it just keeps the natural integrity over time. And with this, we just slide it right into place such a cool position for him to hold this. It looks like he's just about to pull it out of the sheath and attack. So I did mention before that he did have a piece that didn't fit correctly. You'll see a little hole here in this right area of the wood. And then we have that peg that comes out of his foot. Unfortunately, they didn't meet together for some reason. I don't know if they just drilled it in a different place or whatever. Thankfully, it doesn't really mess up the integrity of the statue. It does hold up still really well. And just like Yamato, we have this awesome looking edition size plaque. I gotta say, for edition size plaques, I'm not sure what I'm gonna be doing when I do get my cards done and graded and they return because I think I might replace a lot of the edition size plaques with just cards sitting next to them. We'll have to see and find out, but here are these two amazing statues side by side. If this doesn't get you super excited to see the rest of the line together, I don't know what does. They just look really good together. And speaking of all the actual lot together, here is what they look like. Here's the two that are missing. You probably guessed it, right? Itachi and Sai. Greatly look forward to showcasing those in future videos. And today, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to, again, hit a like, subscribe, and thank you so much for supporting the videos. I will see you in the next one. And as always, everybody, do what you love and love what you do. Bam out.